So if you're anything like me, you like to customize your workspace or your window manager or your desktop environment. And one of the things that's always kind of a pain in the butt is making sure that every application has the icon that fits with your theme. Most of the time you just choose the icon pack that does the best job and you ignore the exceptions, the applications that just don't quite fit in but there's nothing you can do about it. So you've picked the, the icon pack that has the most coverage of the applications that you use. At least that's what I always do. Usually uh, that means I end up with something like Papyrus which is a huge icon pack. It has the vast majority of apps, but there's always just one or two applications that it just doesn't cover, like Vivaldi or Todoist or something like that. Some random flat pack that I happen to use, but nobody else does. So what's a guy to do if you want to truly theme your environment and you want to make sure that every application has the icon that fits just right? Well, you can do it manually. There are terminal ways of making sure that every application uses the proper icon or a specific icon. You could do that. You could edit the .desktop file, I think, in order to change the icon. I think that that would work in some cases. Or you could use the application we're going to talk about today. So let's go ahead and do that. But before we jump in, leave a thumbs up on this video. I'd be really appreciative. It'd really help the channel. So the application we're going to talk about today is called main menu now main menu is a gtk application but that doesn't really matter it will work for every application on your system i think that that applies to every application that has a dot desktop file so if you're using app images then you haven't integrated them with your system yet this may not work for those but i think it works for everything else it definitely works with things that are installed via distrobox and via Flatpak, so it works with containers, so that's really great. So what does this actually do? Well, let's just say that I wanted to change the icon of DaVinci Resolve. It doesn't really fit in with the rest of the icons that I'm using. It's okay, but it's not the best. So what do I, what do I want to do? I could do the manual way in this application. I just hit this button here, then I'd go searching for the icon that I want to use, or I could hit the search box here, search for resolve, and find out that, oh my goodness, there are some other icons available. Now, where these icons come from is a bit of a mystery for me. I think, you can't quote me about this, but I think that it's searching the icons that are on your system through various icon packs. Not sure that that's true or not, but I think so. So if I wanted to select that, I would just do this, I'd hit save, and then eventually the icon here would would replace itself and you can see that it did it takes a little bit of time but you can go through and change by application the icon that it ha has and that is awesome there's really not much more to this application you can have it so that you can ha set up different launchers based on theme so if you wanted to have one icon pack for a certain theme and another for another one you could change launchers that way you do that up here with this menu here you just do new launcher then open launcher or whatever and you can switch between them i don't get into all, all of that i don't need anything that deep instead what i'll do is just when i need to say with vivaldi if i scroll all the way down here to vivaldi you can actually see that i've changed the icon for vivaldi and i all i did there was just hit the search icon search for vivaldi like so and you can actually see that there are some options there for vivaldi again not sure where they're actually getting those icons from because most icon packs don't have icons for vivaldi so your real your guess really is good as mine it doesn't actually say as far as i know where it's getting them from but i'm thinking that it's either from an icon pack or something similar like to, to that but it doesn't really matter where they're getting them because it does have the ability to do this manually so if you can't find an icon here you just would go here and then say you wanted to go to your icons packs you could do show show your hidden file so that's control h and then you go to like dot icons which would be up here for me uh, you may not have this if you haven't downloaded any icons packs by the way you just hit here and then you can go to the pack that you want find the icon that you want so if i wanted one from the grubbox dot dark i'd go spelunking into the directories find the icon that i want and set it Make sure you set the biggest possible size so that it can kind of scale down instead of always scaling up, which would make it look really weird. But you can find this stuff manually if you want to with icon packs. 
Given that I have Grovebox installed and this doesn't actually seem to show Grovebox icons, I'm guessing that it doesn't pull from packs now that I think about it. But again, I'm very honest about this. I don't know where they're pulling the icon packs from. It doesn't really matter because they are at least somewhat there, which is good. So that's really all there is to it. There's not much more that I can share with you because it doesn't do anything else other than change icons. But for me personally, this has been an amazing tool because like I said, there's always one or two applications like Vivaldi, like Todoist, that have no icons in any icon pack. And now I can at least go into main menu and find a icon that looks somewhat like it would fit with the icon pack that I've chosen. That's what I've basically done. And if it doesn't have a specific icon for what you need, you can at least find one that like goes with the category. So for like Todoist, there wasn't one for Todoist. And I didn't want to go splunking into the directories to find one. I just chose a to-do icon that worked fine. So it works really well with the Papyrus theme that I'm using, and it would work well with any others, you know, that I wanted to use. So it, wor it worked just really good. So if you need to change an icon, main menu is where it's at. So that's it for this one. If you have thoughts on this, you can leave those in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. You can follow me on Macedon. That link will be in the video description. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast. There you'll find a weekly exclusive podcast that I put up for all of my patrons. You can get that on YouTube as well if you want to support me on YouTube. Basically, this podcast is me sitting down in front of this microphone and just yapping along for 10 or 15 minutes about random things. So if you are interested in me rambling about random things, go support me on Patreon. All tiers get it. So you can also get over there get early access to my blog posts and keep access to the live stream of the podcast. All sorts of stuff I try to give for my supporters just to show a little bit of appreciation. So there's that. Thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all absolutely amazing. Without you, the channel just would not be anywhere near where it is right now. So thank you so very, very much for your support. I truly do appreciate it. Again, if you want to support me, patreon.com slash linuxcast or Kofi or YouTube, those will work. Or you can add it over to the shop, which is available at shop.thelinuxcast.org. There you find all sorts of awesome merch, all the proceeds for which goes directly towards making more Linux content for you guys possible for me to make. That was a lot of words to say that, what I normally say. So uh, it, it did end up making sense, but it was all in the wrong order. Interesting. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day. I'll see you next time.